The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Greetings everyone and welcome to the final episode of Genix by Z for this year. Now on today's show we have a rather interesting guest who has been experienced in the film industry and many other trades as well. So we really hope you all make sure to stay tuned and learn on his tips and tricks of the trade. With that let's join him right away. And with that let's join this Amila right away as well. Hi Desh, thank you for joining us on today's interview. I miss your busy schedule as well. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. Great to have you, Desh. So, moving on to our first question for the with our conversation, Desh. Uh, we'd like to know what exactly led you towards building an interest towards all your ventures. You've been involved in many as well. You've been doing film producing, philanthropic work, event management, and such like that as well. How exactly, what exactly led your interest towards these ventures, and how did you become passionate towards them? Okay, so um, my story begins in sort of. Early 2000, I left Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. uh, and I was searching for a place that I fit in, yeah. and I found it in the hip hop culture. Mm -hmm. So I consider myself a student of school of hip hop, and with that, I, you know, with that culture, I identified with the struggle, mm -hmm. and with that, I became quite passionate about music, entertainment, and education. Okay. So that is the underpinning of everything I do. So did it start all the way back in school or? Well, yeah, uh, in school I was interested in media. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was in the media club, uh, I was doing a lot of drama, debating. Yeah. So there, was a, there was some theatrics to my life. There was from, a mix up for all Yeah, of and then that all led to, and I'm, I'm, I love storytelling, mm -hmm. I love movies, I love good music. Yeah. So, you know, that's sort of the beginning of that and everything I do you can sort of trace back to sort of those interests. I see, that's great. Now, this we've also known that you've been involved in many kind of work as well. Just to give a brief idea to our audience, could you brief us on the work that you do and also most importantly the uniqueness behind it? Yeah, I mean, I've been privileged enough to do a whole bunch of things. I've dabbled mm -hmm. in a range of things. I was in radio, I was a DJ, I, I, I've been doing events uh, and I've produced films. Uh, I've recently launched a technology platform. Yeah. Uh, we can talk a lot about it. Um, but yeah, I like to uh, change up what I do. Mm -hmm. I don't like to be stagnated in just doing one thing. I like to sort of, you know, try a few things. Uh, and yeah. And now the question I have for you, Dish, is how exactly did you step into the industry? And what led you towards making your mark in the industry? Well, it really depends on uh, the industry because I've been in many industries, mm -hmm. you know, as I mentioned earlier, like I've, I've done radio. Um, so that one came from, uh, um, you know, me wanting to hear a radio show that I wanted to hear and no one was doing it. Yeah. Um, and then in the event industry as well, I created a event vertical that didn't exist. Mm -hmm. Right, and with the films as well, I wanted to watch the film like certain documentaries and talk about certain subject matter, and no one was doing it, or yeah. I thought it wasn't done the way I would like to do it. So you know, my thing was all right. Okay, if no one's doing it, I'll do it. I see. So that was your vision per se in the yeah. in industries. What were the first steps you took, Kadesh? Like, um, for yeah. example, with regard to the media industry as well, how exactly what led you towards your first steps, and what were they exactly? Look, uh, you know, I, I like to stand here and tell you, you know, there was this big plan. Yeah. It wasn't like that, honestly, at the beginning. It was survival, right? I see. You know, I, I, I had to do what I had to do to survive. Mm -hmm. And then over time, uh, those things paid off. Um, you know, um, <laughs> it's now in retrospect, mm -hmm. you know, I can try and piece together why I did what I did and what I was trying to do. Um, you know, initially it was like, I love doing this. Can I make a living out of this? Mm -hmm. You know, and then I would just threw myself in there and hoped yeah. it worked. Now, so you mentioned uh, survival there, Dish. How, how would you like to know more on that as well? Because I'm sure being in different kinds of industries, 
surviving in it as well is quite a challenge and how exactly did you maintain your stability within all these industries as well? Well, I mean, one of the most important things is keeping an ear to the ground and figuring out how the landscape is changing, mm -hmm. right? So, for example, if we talk about media, right? Yeah. Um, if you just look back, say, five years versus now, the way people consume content has fundamentally changed. That's right. right? You know, our children's generation do not watch traditional television. You know, they don't listen to traditional radio. So. I think the key to success is understanding how the landscape is changing okay. and adapting with it. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and the other part is making sure that you, know, you don't do the things you do for the sake of doing it. You do All it right. with intention. You do it with integrity. And you don't cut corners. You deliver excellence every single time. And also, have fun. That's if true. you don't have fun doing what you're doing, uh, you're going to get tired, you're going to get stagnated, you're going to feel like it's a job. Like, I know this is a bit cliche, but I, don't, I genuinely don't feel like anything I do is mm -hmm. work. Yeah. It is what I do. You know? <laughs> it's sort of amalgamated into my life. And I think that is a way uh, for me to continue doing what I do and deliver great things. I think that's why you've been able to be committed towards it as well. I think one uh, disadvantage we see with most youth uh, globally in our country as well is where they have the lack of commitment or yeah. putting that hard work in. Yeah. Do you see that? Do you, do you see that in our present uh, youth? Um, well, um, uh, I, I have to first uh, make this caveat. I haven't worked in Sri Lanka right. for quite a long time, but one of my proudest achievements is. For the longest time, I wanted to work with a Sri Lankan team. Mm -hmm. In the last um, year or so, I managed to put together a sizable team okay. in Sri Lanka, so Team 42. Uh, so I am now working with a sizable Sri Lankan team. Mm -hmm. And I can say, when I left Sri Lanka, what you said was quite yeah. present, but the bunch I'm working with now gives me immense hope. Mm -hmm. Like They all have the hunger and the drive. Um, but you, know, you need to be able to be disciplined and Towards work it. hard, uh, you know, and if you don't have that, you know, nothing comes easy, right? Exactly. You know, especially in the media industry, what we talk about, right? I don't know what the number is, but a few years ago on YouTube alone, mm -hmm. like, I don't know, but like 50 or, or 500 hours worth of content is uploaded every minute. Like, right. how do you get cut through? Like, you know, with TikTok, with Instagram, like this, the barrier to entry and no longer exist. Right? Exactly. So how do you get cut through? You have to be consistent. You have to put in the work. You have to plan. If you don't, you know, some kid in Brazil is going to eat your lunch. Exactly. I think it's quite obvious with most, with any field that you're involved in as well. Um, this now, I think we'd like to maybe trace back on your history or even current as well. We'd like to know what would you list uh, as your top three achievements with regard to all the work that you've done. And we'd also like to hear your experiences on them. Yeah, okay, so this is a hard one, right? Yeah. Uh, I've been privileged enough to do a bunch of things, but if I were to pick the top three, I'd start off with, uh, in 2005, I mm -hmm. produced a radio show called World War One. Uh, okay. I'd end up winning the uh, National Australian Award for the most innovative radio show. I see, you know, that, that was all in 2005. Yeah, that was in 2005, but it still holds a special place in my heart because uh, you know, I was relatively new to Australia. Just five years, right? Since it, you migrated. Yeah, yeah. right. And, and I, I made my mark already and I, I had this show that was listened to by so many people. Mm -hmm. They ended up winning the award, which was unexpected. So that was my first one. Second one, I would say, just happened this year. My second film, okay. Better Left Unsaid, won the Best International Documentary at Anthem Film Festival, which was, you know, as a filmmaker, the, getting that acknowledgement is quite something special. Mm -hmm. um, and third one, I would say, is Qualia, so, right. which is fresh, uh, it's infancy, but um, I've recently created a new platform uh, which is trying to educate the world by giving access to the world's greatest thinkers. Okay. Um, so Qualia is out now and, you know, the concept is a pretty big idea, it still is infancy, but um, I had to produce it during a pandemic. Yeah, you know, you're producing it, putting the technology together, mm -hmm. getting access to the content and eventually putting it out 
personally is a massive deal. So Definitely. I consider that a big achievement. I'm sorry, I asked you to I asked you to limit it to three as well. Do you have any of the special mentions you would like you would want uh, to mention then? Yeah, I mean I would say, you know, I, I created Thinking, which is the world's first intellectual um, uh, lifestyle touring company. All right. Um, but look, we'll leave it at that. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, so I think um, Moving on to our discussion, uh, I think we spoke earlier as to how you're supposed to be committed into your work, put in the hard work. Specifically with regard to the media industry, uh, Desh, what would you say are the core values someone should have within themselves in order to excel and succeed within such a, such a dynamic industry? Well, um, it's important uh, that you are disciplined mm -hmm. and you're consistent, right? When I say, what I mean by that is, let's say you want to be on YouTube, right? you yeah. want to be a YouTuber. By the way, it is now, uh, at least in the West, the number one most aspirational thing for kids. Like being a YouTuber, it's not a doctor, it's not a lawyer, it's not an actor, it's a being a YouTuber, right? If you want to do that, you need to be disciplined. Uh, you need to decide, okay, am I releasing content once a week? And what's the length? You know, the, and you need to deliver on that. Mm -hmm. You need to be disciplined enough to create the content and continue. Like, if you're going to tell your audience, I'm releasing something on a Friday, you release it on a Friday. You, you don't, you know, mess about. Second thing is, I think you need to have a level of integrity with your content uh, and what you say. Mm -hmm. If you are an opportunistic person who uh, just use the opportunity just to sort of, you know, uh, get points and follow trends, yeah. you're soon going to run out of trends to mm -hmm. follow. You know, I think it's important that you lead with integrity in That's that true. sense. And the, the next thing is you must enjoy what you do. If you're not having fun, you know, you've just created a job for yourself, right? Yes. You know, whatever it is. And this is the beautiful thing about the internet and the modern world of media, mm -hmm. right? If your interest is so niche, I can bet you there, uh, there is a group of people somewhere in the world that are interested in your niche, right? Yeah. And you can find them, right? I remember first hearing about, I don't know if you know about ASMR. It's yeah. where, where you whisper into, like when I first saw it, I thought, who wants this? Exactly. But, now, I uh, know content creators who are multimillionaires doing that. Through ASMR, you know, yeah. mukbang or, you know, like eating food, like it, you will find your niche. So, you know, find your niche, be disciplined, lead with integrity and have a lot of fun and you'll be fine. I think those are some amazing co-values someone could represent within, in being involved in the industry as well. Also, Desh, now what we hope to do within this program as well is where we motivate and influence you through your personality. Was there someone like that when you were starting off, uh, Desh? Was there any influential person, uh, organization, yeah. or even cause that uh, led you towards, that motivated you per se? Look, uh, uh, that's a very good question. Yeah. I remember growing up uh, here and I actually didn't have anyone locally. See, I'm yeah. not very good with sports, right? Okay. You know, growing up in the 90s in, in Sri Lanka, 80s and 90s, you know, Cricket was the thing, right? But I wasn't very good at yeah. cricket, so I didn't want to be a cricketer. Mm -hmm. I, and then the rest of the people that were all around were politicians. I had no interest in that uh, as yeah. well. Um, but I hope things have changed now. Yeah. Um, so when I was growing up, I really didn't have anyone to look up to. And one of the things I would love to do now is to be the person I didn't have when I was young. You know, mm -hmm. I want to be the person that I would have looked up to. Yeah. So I want to, you know, I, I, the reason I agree to do this is because I want to show 16 year old me mm -hmm. that this is possible. Remember, I was yeah. born in Badulla. You right. know, I, I came from a, a family that was very unlikely to get to, you mm -hmm. know, lead me to where I am right now. Yeah. So it is absolutely possible. I see. Right. That's great to hear this. So this definitely started with some very much humble beginnings and moved his way all the way to the top. With that, we're now moving on to a short commercial break. Stay tuned for more on Gen XYZ. Welcome back everyone to the show of Gen XYZ. Now, early on we spoke with regard to how Desh exactly uh, found his interest in the industry and what really led him towards taking his first steps and how he made his mark in the industry. 
Now, moving on this, um, earlier we also spoke about what exactly motivated you in the start. Now, with regard to the media industry, we see it being fast-paced, dynamic, new trends coming up here and there and something you worked on right now might not be relevant today or tomorrow or even the next week. How exactly do you keep yourself motivated by being in the industry, uh, Dish? What exactly are the thoughts you look out for and how do you keep yourself motivated per se? Well, it's an exciting time to be in the media industry because okay. there are so many opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. That excites me, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, I am producing the world's number one philosophy podcast. I see. Right? A few years ago, podcast wasn't really a thing, right? Exactly. Now, yeah. millions of people listen to podcasts. So I keep an ear to the ground, figuring out what's happening, mm -hmm. right? So I got into podcast late, as far as I'm concerned, okay. right? But now we've got four podcasts we are producing and you know, hundreds of thousands of people listen to it and, I, and that excites me. So when there's a new technology coming up, I'm like, okay, so how can we do what we used to do, but differently? Look, it's at, if you think about it, it's just a change of the delivery mechanism, right? Okay. At the end of the day, you're still producing a piece of content for people to consume. It is delivered differently. So don't worry too much about how it is delivered. Mm -hmm. you know, adapt and change as you see fit, right? If you want to get onto TikTok, you know, what's changed is what used to be a long form piece of content now has to be short form. 15 and seconds. It, right? Exactly. And, and it, it needs to be loopable. But if you've seen some TikTok you know, that go viral, incredibly creative, right? Mm -hmm. You just have to understand, okay, this is a platform, this is a medium, right? So example, podcast medium, like our podcasts are hour long. Because okay. our audiences want a nuanced, long-form discussion. So you can't do the 15-second TikTok Definitely thing not. on the podcast yeah. world, right? But with that said, I've recently had a conversation with a platform that's about to come up. Look, they might not make it, but they're called Colin. Like, they're mm -hmm. trying to create the audio version of Instagram. So imagine, okay. like, 15, 20-second audio bits. Mm -hmm. Like, whether it takes off or not. But I am keeping an ear to the ground. I'm like, okay, if they're coming up, what can I do there? Let me trial something. All right. And look, not everything is suited for you. Like, TikTok is not for me. I'm yeah. not going to do anything <laughs> on TikTok, right? Exactly. I know yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a uh, you know, uh, area for a younger audience. Definitely. But that doesn't mean there aren't other areas that new that we, we can't be a, a part of. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Clubhouse, which yeah. is an audio, mm -hmm. you know, sort of uh, conversational platform. So again, my answer to really your question is, uh, it's not daunting. Rather, you know, take what you're doing right now, figure out how to adapt it to the mm -hmm. medium that is out there. So I think the key words would be adapt and change. Yeah, yeah, adaptation, adaptation. Like, if you don't adapt and evolve, yeah. Well, I'm sorry, you're going to be an old dinosaur and no one's going to be listening. I think what you mentioned as well, now there are new and rather interesting ideas coming up day by day. So you have to keep up as much yeah. as possible then. And, and look, you know, social media is, is a curse and a blessing. Mm. I, I think social media has the potential to do greater good. I think it did at the beginning. Right now, it's a very divisive place. Yeah. But you have to be intelligent enough to figure out, uh, you know, Social media is where you're going to find out about the new thing that's coming out, exactly. right? You, because social media has, bec is, has replaced traditional media. That's where people find news. But you need to figure out what news you listen to and then figure out, you know, okay, there's a new platform. Or what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And then adapt and change. Adapt and change, definitely. Change. Also, Desh, now going through your personal biography as well, you have worked with many well-known celebrities and globally renowned artists as well. Are there any special mentions or who was your favorite celebrity to work with? Just to, just to maybe yeah, get to know who, who you worked with as well. Look, uh, it's a bit of an unfair question because I've had the privilege to yeah. with, with working with some amazing musicians okay. and some of the greatest intellectual thinkers. If you push me to pick, I'll pick two. Mm -hmm. um, so I toured this Grammy Award winning uh, hip hop crew called Naughty okay. by Nature. Yeah. Um, and Here's a story about them. So they won Grammys and they were at the height of success in the 90s. Mm. But I toured them in sort of mid 2000, right. right? So almost two decades later. Yeah. But they were, although they were a bit older, mm -hmm. their dedication to 
putting on a show and really entertaining their crowd and making sure, giving their fans what they want. It was inspiring to see. I'm like, you know, imagine singing the same song for 20 oh, years. Yeah, like, like you'd be like, oh, I don't want to do this. But yeah. they weren't like that. They were like, they knew exactly their fans will appreciate if they sang it like mm -hmm. they want. Right? And there was so much passion. So that, that's from a uh, music point of view. From an intellectual uh, thinker's perspective, I've got so many, but I'm going to pick uh, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Exactly. Right? Yeah, right. Uh, Dr. Tyson, uh, he, he, I've toured him three times. I, I smiled because you know, uh -huh. he, he doesn't like me calling him Dr. Tyson anymore because I we see. know each other well. Yeah. He, he says, Neil, he's an extraordinary mind. Imagine sort of being with somebody who's constantly in awe of the universe and it just rubs on you, right? Yeah. So, you know, I've yeah. had the luxury to tour him three times. So okay. he is just an extraordinary mind. I remember mm. the first time we toured him, he got out of the plane. He said, Desh, it's the first time I'm in Australia. I'm here for 24 hours. <laughs> uh, tell me what to do. All right. And we did this event. And after that, he said, I was tired, right? He's like, no, I'm only here for a few hours. You know, <laughs> take me to the top of a, a building. I will show you the sky. Mm -hmm. And I got a personal sort of, uh, you know, experience of the universe. And he, he walked me through, you know, that star means that, that is this, that. <laughs> That experience, that easy. You, you know, yes. you, 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 can, you, can, you can't say anything other than just in awe-inspiring. Those are quite interesting, I'm sure. With uh, the amount of commitment and work you put in as well, I think you've deserved to be amongst these greats as well. Certainly. Wait, here's a little secret, right? Yeah. Um, some of the people I've toured, I did it because I wanted to be with them. I wanted uh -huh. to enjoy them. Yeah. And I just hope other people wanted to see them. So it was, there was a little bit of like, Oh man, I want to be with Dr. Michio Kaku. I want to, I want to hang out with <laughs> yeah. Neil. And it, I was lucky because I wasn't the only one who thought that. You yeah. know, thousands of yeah. other people came to the event, so it worked out. That's great to hear. Also, this I think early on you mentioned of thinking. Mm -hmm. Now I'm sure most of us would like to know more about that as well. What exactly uh, led you towards Think Inc. and what was the purpose behind this initiative? Yeah, sure. Um, so first and foremost, I want to say. Uh, the inspiration for this came from hip hop events I was doing. Okay. Right? So um, I remember being at a concert, there was thousands of people immersed by the words coming out of one person on a stage, right? Mm -hmm. And I was looking at going, you know, wow, the amount of power and control that person has okay. to influence the audience. Now, as much as I love the music, um, at that point I felt like we could do more. And I was interested in science, philosophy, and things that are in the intellectual nature. But those events were relegated to just university lectures and sort of boring conferences. I see. And I was like, yeah. how do I get you know, cool kids into intellectual events? Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, no one's doing it. Why don't I put these intellectuals at a hip hop arena and put lots of lights and visuals and kind of like make it like a concert. That attracts the, uh, right? the youth audience more. So my whole, everything I do now, right? I want to make being intelligent cool, right? And I was exactly. like, I need to get the cool kids in there to make it cool. But to get the cool kids, the event itself had to be interesting. But mm -hmm. right? it can't be, I thinking did, never did any lectures. Yeah. We had these amazing experiences. So that was sort of the thinking behind thinking. It was creating intellectual events that were boring and sort of like lecture-like. Okay. They were an experience that will elevate your understanding of the world. I see. Any events you want, want to mention uh, that you all did with True Thinking Dish? Yeah, Any? so you know, again, Neil deGrasse Tyson's event was Wasn't extraordinary. Up. The last tour we did, you yeah. know, like 26,000 people came and mm -hmm. I've, I've been told by people that attended that event, the final event, you know, we was meant to be like uh, 90 minutes, but it went for yeah. almost like two and a half hours because it was such a great event. Um, that was, was a highlight. Um, and mm. then uh, I did an event with uh, Professor Richard Dawkins. Yeah. Um, that was amazing just to hear the man. I mean, he's, he's a bit old now, but his intellect is still exactly. extraordinary. Out of this world. I yeah. Think, yeah. Um, I would also say, I, uh, right off the back of um, Edward Snowden uh, running away yeah. from America, mm -hmm. I actually did an event with him. I see. The way we did was he was in a secret location in Russia. Russia. So we had this back then, funny story, we used these uh, robots with a screen where he controlled from Russia. So okay. the robot would come in, it was a screen. Uh -huh. It was a little known company back then called Zoom. 
Oh, I see. Well, this was, you know, Zoom was not a thing. This must have been way back then. Yeah, I so see. this was when, when the company, it was called the Zoom Bot. We renamed mm -hmm. it to Snowden Bot. But, right. you know, he, it, that event was a highlight uh, because it was so unusual. I see. That's great to hear. I think those are quite some key experiences. Um, I think most of us would like to hear as well with regard to what you've been doing this. Also now, this, I think uh, something we all, something we want to improve and enhance in our lifestyle is soft skills. And I'm sure I think one soft skill that you have quite mastered, I would say, is time management. You've been involved in, you know, you've, you've not just involved, you've also excelled in many other fields and such. What's your secret behind this dish and how exactly did you manage to be involved and also excel with all these various fields? Well, I'll start off by saying this. Among all these successes yeah. are a plethora of failures that many <laughs> people haven't heard of, right? Because yeah. no one hears about the things you didn't get right. That's people true. see what you got right. So I've had more things going wrong than things going right. So mm -hmm. that's actually, that keeps me humble, right? Yeah. Uh, because I know not everything I do is a massive success and I learn from them. You know, I'm at a certain point in life that I'm not scared of making mistakes. At the beginning, I, you know, it, it petrified me. I didn't want to accept anything that I've done is wrong. But now I'm, I'm quick to identify, which leads to the time management question, right? Yeah. At the beginning, I was working like from 6 a.m. to 11 o'clock at night. I was working, 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 trying to make things work. And the key is, that is unsustainable. You're going to burn out. Mm -hmm. My philosophy now is I work in short bursts yeah. and my productivity is high. The quality of what I do is quite high, but I don't do uh, like long runs of just nonstop working. Mm -hmm. I take plenty of breaks. I eat well. I exercise mm -hmm. and I spend plenty of time with my family. Yeah. I listen to good music and I you know, watch movies, I read books, I get inspiration from things that will eventually help me create uh, better things, a better world. Yeah. So my time management is rather simple. You know, don't overwork. Don't, I also make sure I prioritize because I'm exactly. doing so many different things, right? I figure out, okay, if I don't do this right now, what is the flow and effect? If the flow and effect is not catastrophic or it's not gonna have a massive impact, it goes be, uh, below, know, the below list, yeah. right? And then I organize it like that and I worked accordingly. And this is, as entrepreneurs, you're sort of, you, you're forced to feel like, you know, oh, if I don't do it, I'm wasting time. Okay. It's not like that. It doesn't work like that, right? If you don't do something, that's fine. You can do it tomorrow. Mm. There's no point in sort of uh, busting yourself because you're gonna burn out. Definitely. And then as more tired you get, the quality of what deliver goes down. Exactly, that's true. I think our uh, key words from there would be where you prioritize your task and keep it simple as much as possible. I think also one challenge everyone has with managing or prioritizing your work and also time management per se is minimizing your distractions. I think uh, with this device, with us all the time as well, we are always distracted with uh, everything going on there and we find it hard to focus. Any advice you'd like to give with regard to minimizing your distractions, Adesh? So, um, you're absolutely right about the device, right? Yeah. But you've got to think about this in, in the sense of, right now the smartest people humanity has to offer uh, are trying their best to keep you addicted to them. That's their yeah. job, right? Yeah, exactly. They're, they're tricking uh, the neurophysiology of your brain so you stay on that device, mm -hmm. right? The moment I work that out, one of the things I've done is I actually allocate time on my calendar. Okay. Like in the morning, I spend about 10, 15 minutes on Twitter. Right. But that's the only time I do that. And I've actually deleted most of my social media off my mobile phone. Okay. I have all of them on my laptop only. I see. That's right? interesting. That's because that way, the, the little thing on your palm is not constantly telling you what, you know, it's something someone's waiting because that's that's anxiety inducing. Yeah. Like that's what it's supposed to do. So one, put all of your social media on your laptop, mm -hmm. right? And if you choose to keep certain things, turn all the notifications off. Right. If there's an emergency, they will contact you in your text message or give you a call. Exactly. There are no emergencies <laughs> on social media, Definitely. right? It's a yeah. trick, don't fall into that. I see. So I think it's important where you also include these within your lifestyle as well. And hopefully it can help you better prioritize your work. With that dish, we're now coming to the end of this segment as well. Make sure you all stay tuned on our next on our next segment as we move on to a short commercial break.
welcome back to Gen X YZ guys. Now with me is Desh Amila who I would like to say is a futuristic personality and we are and early on we spoke on what exactly motivates him to be in this field and how exactly he excels in all various kinds of diverse fields out there and how he manages his time as well. Um, now Desh moving on with our conversation. Early on you mentioned of Qualio. I'm sure most of our audience would like to know more about that as well and what was the uh, the purpose behind this of of Qualio per se. So Qualia Qualia, is sorry. a uh, video on demand platform and the idea here is see if you want to learn from the world's greatest thinkers who are alive you really only have a few options right okay. one is you can read their books or go to events that you know, people like me organize but yeah. you can only learn so much from that the third way is you can go to the universities that they teach and they tend to generally be Ivy League universities in America. Yeah. Right? For that, you have to be born into a certain amount of privilege. Not many people get that. That's true. Imagine a, a kid in Valimeda or yeah. Guandarela who wants to access the world's greatest thinkers. How do you do that? You really don't have a way of doing that. So this is the purpose of what I wanted to do I with see. Qualia. So Qualia gives you access to the world's greatest living thinkers and what they teach. So we've recently launched a platform. Again, I did mention earlier it's at the infancy. We right now have four amazing thinkers. Okay. We have the world's great, uh, most dangerous philosopher, Peter Singer, teaching you ethics. Okay. It's an in-depth uh, you know, learning of um, ethical conundrums you might have. Mm -hmm. But it is to a level that's quite deep, whether you are a high schooler or a university student or just somebody who's intellectually curious, you're going to learn an immense lot and it is just as a filmmaker I take pride in making it cinematically beautiful content yeah. you know I have a philosopher professor uh, Rebecca Goldstein from Yale uh, mm -hmm. teaching you uh, philosophy I have an amazing mathematician from Australia Adam Spencer teaching you mathematics okay. and I have the legendary Steven Pinker from Harvard at uh, teaching you various number of things and I've got some great stuff coming down the track that for me is these are things that I, again, I want to have access to, but I'm not going to go to Ivy League University yeah. and be there for three years. You can do it now. On so the you made it happen. I so made it happen. <laughs> that's great. So this is something obviously new as well, right? Uh, how long has it been this now? So we are literally a few weeks old. It I see. It just came out. All right. It's in its, uh, you know, beta version. Mm -hmm. Just testing out, seeing how the market is like, you know, what people are, you know, consuming. And the good news is uh, there is a, there is an interest. How has the response been so far then? It's yeah, it's been, it's been interesting. You know, we have a number of people who subscribe. We can see people are consuming content. People are uh, curiously interested in seeing what is this now, okay. look we are entering uh, a very overcrowded market right yeah if you look at the subscription video on demand platforms you've got from netflix all the way to all the pluses that come exactly from, right? yeah <laughs> so how do you get that through like my thing is here I'm not trying to get to to a large audience like a netflix this is what i'm trying to do could be the netflix of intellectual content right so i'm only going after people who want who are intellectually curious who want mm -hmm. to learn um right. yeah we'll see you know you can ask me that question in two years and see maybe yes hopefully we'll <laughs> definitely call that as well call. Uh, with regard to also i think your past work um this i think your film that you also created called islam and the future of tolerance now that is quite something that's a sensitive topic as well but is very much needed in today's day and age Plus the experience behind this production, this and how exactly you were able to handle and deliver something quite sensitive but very much needed in today's day and age. Yeah, look, um, I remember at that point when we were making the film, yeah. the conversation about Islam was just so fraught. Like, you know, the one half of the world thought the whole world's problem were because of this group of people, mm -hmm. right? This ideology. And then the other group didn't want to talk about it because if you talk about it, you know, it might offend a bunch of people. Yes. And I was like, that's not how we move forward. We need to talk about it. So Islam and the Future of Tolerance was made in a, with that intention talking about uh, an important ideology in the contemporary world, mm -hmm. right? Um, the experience was challenging, obviously. Yeah. Everyone at that point was just scared of the idea. Okay. See, uh, but really, once we sort of delve into it, explain to the people we were making the film with, what's the purpose of this? Mm -hmm. Purpose being, we wanted to talk in depth about the ideology. It wasn't really about Muslim people per se. It mm -hmm. was about an ideology, Islam. 
you know? yeah. where does it stem from what we you know where is it going how does it fit into the modern world you know just like any ideology it has its pluses and minuses yeah and we made it a point to spend an uh, enormous amount of research and time to do right by the subject you know we didn't go in with an agenda saying this is right or this is wrong you know, we wanted to make sure it's what you're putting out is right as well exactly you know it if you watch our film yeah you won't be able to say that you know it is a propaganda piece for either side it is not mm made in that sense. It is there to educate and entertain to a certain degree, but really do justice to the subject matter. Right. And also with regard, now speaking with regard to Sri Lanka as well, I think uh, with our culture as well, we might have some sensitive problems to this. How would you advise someone within our, maybe our youth as well to take on efforts like this that are, that are quite tabooed? or which is uh, not really spoken of quite frequently or where it's shunned out in the today's in our general public how would you advise someone to take on these efforts of handling these sensitive topics yeah look um, first and foremost if you want to do that know that you will be judged immediately by people yeah. who don't know your intentions so keep your intentions uh, intellectually honest right don't do it for a quick gain do it for the reason as you want to you're intellectually curious you know uh, and don't go in with preconceived notions of mm -hmm. what you want it to be let the story change as needed right I see. and be ready to change your own mind so when i was making islam in the future of tolerance i had to change my mind about certain things i thought were the reality okay. right when i made my second film better left unsaid yeah. right which is out now i was forced to change my mind mm -hmm. as we film, right? Going with the intention of capturing, doing right by the subject matter you're going to talk about and be flexible enough to change your mind. Flexible. And at the end of the day, make sure that you've done enough research, yeah. right? Uh, it is paramount. If it is a, as you put it, a taboo subject, the amount of research is important. First, to understand how the community is seeing it versus what it really is right right when you then you need to deliver a product that this audience who may have a perception about the subject mm -hmm. matter but wrong about it and you find out okay we're thinking about this all wrong well don't be scared but make sure if you've covered your ground then no one can look at your product and say well you've made a hit piece yes right because if you actually do that you're doing a disservice to the subject matter yourself and the community as a whole. Definitely, that's true. Um, also, since you mentioned this uh, on your new movie, Better Left Unsaid, what exactly is that? Uh, what's the theme behind that movie? First? Yeah, so Better Left Unsaid is looking at uh, the political extremism on both the political left and okay. the political right. Mm -hmm. Like right now, especially in the West, uh, uh, thanks to social media, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there is an enormous divide between the left and the right. So the film tried to explore, you know, what are the root causes of this and how do we come out of this? What do we do about it? Now we spent, at least I said I had forced to change my mind because I consider myself on the political left, okay. right? We had, I had to look at my tribe mm -hmm. through a quite specific lens that I've never looked at it. And exactly. I realized well, we have our own baggage. So we actually spend a fair bit of time in the movie exploring that, you know, I didn't necessarily agree or wasn't, was very happy with what I found out, but I had to change my mind. I had to say true to what I found out. Exactly, that's true. Now speaking on films per se, uh, this, with regard to film production, what exactly are the necessary skills someone should inculcate within themselves if they're taking on the venture of film production? Well, you have to be a bit of a jack of all trade. Like jack a of all. producer. <laughs> producer means you just have to produce the film right you got to do yeah. everything you whatever that is necessary to make the final product mm -hmm. whether it is raising funds finding the talent you know finding the researchers finding the post production places just need to be able to do whatever it's necessary to make the thing happen right it is not for everybody you need to be a people person you need to be able to adapt very quickly yeah. you know you need to just have that sort of drive you've got to deliver it Definitely. You know, again, it's not for everybody. If you're a creative, like a, a full creative at the heart of it, it maybe a bit difficult for you. Yes. But if you really want to deliver a product, no one's going to do it for you. I understand. Producer, you might have to be a producer. Like I wasn't, I wasn't interested in being a producer. Mm -hmm. I kind of had to. 
And for okay. me to make my films, I had to be the producer because no one's going to do that work yeah. for me. So that's why in both my films, I'm producer director. Yes, exactly. Right? So I had to produce it myself because no one's going to do it for do me. It for How long have you been in the film industry per se? Um, yeah, so my first Just film came out in 2019, uh, okay. started making it in 2017. I see. Only a few years. So okay. what exactly are the top three lessons you might have learned? It may, it may have come through hardships or it may have come through mistakes. Any top three lessons that you have learned by being even in the media industry or in anything with regard to whole? Well, look, with regards to film, I can say this. Don't get into the film industry to make money. You're not going to make any, <laughs> any money anytime soon. Yeah. Because you know, it, it's, it's a very tough industry. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a, um, but so that's the first thing. Don't go in there thinking that you're going to make a ton of money. You know? All right. Uh, don't uh, go, because when you look at Hollywood, you see the Hollywood glamour. Understand that is like 1% of the 1% of the 1%. That see that right. That's first thing. Um, uh, second thing is you know, pick things that interest you, right? Mm -hmm. And this while having other things to help your hobby. This is really your hobby, and make mistakes. Do the things you want to do. Right. And after a certain point, once you've mastered it, once you have a name, it becomes a little bit easier. Um, and the third thing I would say is really with at the beginning we talked yeah. about adaptation and right. you know if you're a filmmaker don't be fooled that you have to make 90 minutes feature films right okay. you don't have to a tiktoker can be a great filmmaker mm -hmm. you know make film or content to the platform that you plan to be a success in like i've seen some incredible youtubers yeah. that make hollywood grade cg animated, you know, great stuff, but they are making it for YouTube, right? Exactly. Understand the platform you're trying to reach your audience mm -hmm. in. Now, film, the large screen, is the most expensive thing you can do. Definitely. Right? So, I, I, what I learned is you adapt to the platforms. You know, I'm still at heart, I love big movies, so I eventually am going to make big movies down Hopefully, the track. Hopefully, we'll That's my plan. <laughs> But for the time being, I'm just adapting to platforms that I'm operating in. So now, uh, also this, since we want to maybe influence more you to take on opportunities like this, I see you were also looking to work forward with a Sri Lankan team. How exactly could uh, you get in touch with you and join you in your vision? Look, if you are interested in sort of media field, if you're interested in sort of audio editing, video editing, animating, mm -hmm. CG work, uh, research work, production work, yeah, please get in touch with us. And not only that, from uh, you know technology builders like if you're a coder you know if you want to build platforms get in touch with me I really want to build a massive creative team in Sri Lanka you can do that just I'm on social media look for Desh and Miller yeah. or just go to deshandmiller.com there's a form I'm easily accessible and I make it a point to talk to as many people as possible uh, you know I do a lot of things but uh, you know my time is limited but I also know See, I wasn't given many opportunities. Right. I had to fight to get those opportunities. Yeah. And if I can give people opportunities, I will. You know, even mm. if it is, you may not be able to work with me, but if it means that I have to give you some time to talk to you, I will do my utmost to give you that. Definitely, that's great to hear, Desh. I think now moving on to the final few minutes of our show as well. I have my final question to you, Desh. Well, what exactly would your final key advice be to young and aspiring filmmakers who really want to make a mark in the industry and take that leap towards and take the risks as well. What would your key advice be towards all of them? Well, uh, this goes to us beyond the film mm -hmm. aspect, right? Yes, which definitely. is, um, I made this mistake, which is trying to create the perfect product. Mm -hmm. uh, don't do that. Whatever the MVP, the minimum viable product you can make, you know, you may only have access to an average phone. It doesn't matter, right? Make the thing you want to make, put it out there. Your first thing is not going to be a masterpiece, right? Yeah. Don't try to make that masterpiece. Put it out there, get your hands dirty first, you know, mm -hmm. learn from your mistake. And we uh, have been, uh, you know, presented this idea that rejection or going, getting things wrong is bad. It isn't. A, you know, cliche may be, you are going to learn from your mistakes. So make mistakes, 
do the thing you want to do, put it out there, see what people say, you know, Definitely. see how it resonates, you know, you might be that genius, the first thing takes off, chances are you won't be, but that's okay, none of us are really, right? Exactly. You know, genius aren't really born, right? genius is something that you learn and over time uh, become. I see. So I think with that now we come to the end of our show as well, Desh. And that was some amazing key advice on to all of our audience and viewers as well. It has been a pleasure and amazing talking to you as well, Desh. Thank you for joining with us amidst your busy schedule as well and joining on for Gen XYZ. Thank you so much for having me. I had great fun. Thank you. Great to have you, Desh. With that, we'd like to thank our audience as well for tuning in on this year's on this episode of Gen XYZ. With that, we've also come to the final episode of Gen XYZ for this year. So make sure you all stay tuned next year as well to learn and find out about more content related to the youth of Sri Lanka. Also, if you all have missed or want to rewatch any of this episode, make sure you log on to dupe.com slash English. With that, I'm signing off for now. I'm Zahid Aman. Stay safe and take care.